It's a big day here at Mike's Motor Works because today and on this episode, those heads are going on our LA Fent motor. You don't want to miss it. It all happens now here on Mike's Motor Works. <laughs> Our heads are from Indy Cylinder Heads, and these are the W2 models. They feature uh, intake port volume at 180cc, which is 16cc bigger than the stock head, and they feature an exhaust port volume at 85cc. Now the intake valve diameter is 2.1 inches and the exhaust valve diameter is 1.65 inches. And there is a total of 63 cc's inside the combustion chamber, which are a heart shape. Now the um, recommendation for these is that um, the assembled heads as we got them um, with either solid or roller rockers should be good up to 0.650 lift. Our cam is a custom grind from Hughes Engines, and um, this is a uh, particular grind here that has a lobe separation of 110 degrees. And then, of course, um, I'm going to give you two sets of numbers here. The intake lift, all right, intake lift with 1.5 ratio is 0.645 on the intake side and 0.630 on the exhaust side. If we were to go and choose 1.6 ratio rockers, then we're looking at 0.688 on the intake with uh, 0.672 on the exhaust. And we're looking at a duration of approximately 267. At this point, we're going to go ahead and make a mess and get ready for our cam install. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, didn't we see you install the cam a little bit ago? Yes, we did that to ensure that the uh, lifters were getting the proper amount of lift with the new bushings and such installed. This time, we're doing the full installation. Now, if you're looking at that bolt up there, yeah, that's not the factory bolt. That's all right. We're just getting it in place. But we will tighten the factory bolt to the recommended 30 foot-pounds. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and lube, uh, lube up each lobe, try saying that five times fast, and uh, ensure that when we place it inside the block itself, we're not marring up any of the uh, bearings themselves. Much easier last time. Okay. 
It's time to go ahead and set the cam retaining plate on there so that we don't have any back and forth movement. And we're gonna go ahead and get that lubed up and set on there as well. And each of the bolts that hold that thing, and that's 35 foot pounds for this guy as well. Just the main crank bolt, okay. These are, those are just hand tight. It's time to go ahead and get that thrust plate installed, not retaining plate. I'm uh, still learning my vocabulary over here as the host and hobby guy. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get this set in place and uh, that way the cam isn't prone to sliding back and forth. Notice the generous amounts of assembly lube on there. Speaking of which, if interesting note here, the uh, key here um, did not come with the kit itself. So uh, we had to take a couple of extra Woodruff keys that we had in stock at the shop and uh, then grind that to fit into place. And so, um, yeah, uh, still using standard Woodruff keys is just modified to fit this application. Our timing chain is supplied by Summit Racing, part number G6603R-9, and it features a double chain on sprockets. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing initially to zero, but there are different ways that we can set the crank um, for different timing purposes, and that's one of the reasons that set us forth in uh, getting, making this purchase, of course, besides the double roll chain. So we got the timing point for the cam set towards the crank itself. And of course the crank is currently set at zero. And we can take that away or add to it as needed. Again, it's just a balancing act. Nice fit. So I want to stand corrected. We are using that bolt. It is a uh, grade five, you said? Bolt. And so we're going to stick with that. We're going to go ahead and set this to 30 foot pounds with dad's arm in the way. <laughs> and there we go. So later we're going to go ahead and get the retainer on there, but that's before we set in the um, uh, timing cover. <laughs> 